Lord, we thank you for your pray, can we? Lord, we thank you for your word now, for our gathering to it. Lord, for each one that is represented here, each family. Lord, move in us, Lord, by your Spirit's power. Lord, receive our gifts and be glorified in your church. Be lifted up in our thoughts and praise as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go to the Word of God. Um, if you've got your Bible, to Psalm 133. And uh, we're going to stand for the reading of God's Word if we can. You can read the words, read along with me if you like, as we read just this psalm. It's a short psalm, three verses, Psalm 133. Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. Psalm 133 is a song. It's David's song. And he sings about a blessed unity among God's people. And I'm talking today about the unity of God's people. It's the quality that God commends for us. Not saying we don't have that here, but it's something we could always do better, isn't it? Something we do well to strengthen as as our church, as our gathering. God wants it for his people, for, for we, the people of God. And he wants that real unity a spiritual fellowship, a true fellowship, centered on Christ himself and grounded and lined up with God's truth, his word. So David talks about, I'll put to you three things, and the first one I'd like us to see is that David talks about benefits. He talks about some benefits here. Psalm 133 verse 1, it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Look at some of the benefits that we have from God's kind of unity, God's unified body. It's good and it's pleasant. That's what it says. It brings many blessings and benefits, you could think. For example, peace, when there's a unity, when there's a togetherness, there's there's a comfort, there's there's an encouragement there, there's a support there, there's forgiveness, there's that, that blessed love. And look at the other side of the coin. Imagine if we were saying the opposite of what this verse says. We could say how bad and unpleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in disunity. Because we don't want that. We want to be uh, encouraging one another. So much the more as we see the day approaching. We see in Mark 3, verse 24, in part it reads, If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. You know, disunity, it brings discord. It brings disharmony and disagreement and destruction, disorder, disaster, disunity. Think of it. It brings misunderstandings and factions, hostilities and hurts, resentments, isolation. See that happen at times. It's a sad thing when a church is divided like that. We want rather to aspire to be a united church. Someone has said, if Satan can't destroy the church from without, he will try to divide it from within. And we see that it's his pattern, isn't it? To divide and pull things apart. It reads in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. The word divisions here, it means factions, the tearing apart of something that is whole, like a piece of cloth being torn. That's what the devil wants, isn't it? To divide, to cause disorder and confusion. He's the author of it. Satan loves to create conflict and clashes and arguments and falling out, to divide brother from brother to scatter us, to tear us apart. As someone put it, there's nothing more disappointing than to meet a brother who has his dispensations right, but his disposition wrong. You know, we can have it all down pat, all the doctrine, uh, but our attitude 
if that's wrong, that's a big uh, disaster, isn't it? You know, some matters are secondary issues, and yet some make them such a big fuss. Real Bible-based fellowship doesn't mean we disregard sound Bible doctrines. This is not a unity at any price. We're not saying that. Of course, some would say we're all big one, happy, clappy family, and join together in all kinds of, of mishmash of religions. We see that trend to that, don't we, these days, the interfaith, not just interdenominational. Yet God commands a unity, a unity that's a biblical, scriptural, godly kind of unity. It's a wonderful unity. And many times it talks about the church of God being in one accord, hand in hand, arm in arm, with each other. That's a good and godly thing. There's certainly benefits there, isn't there? It says of the early church that they all believed and they were together, often this word together, and they devoted themselves. They, they gave this constant attention to fellowship. As we read in Acts 2, 42, they continued steadfastly. There's that, that sense of they were really committed. They were steadfastly continuing in the apostles' doctrine, the teaching of the word of God, in the fellowship, the getting together, in the breaking of bread, the communion and, and other mutual meals and such. And in the prayers, we can do that today, can't we? And we can continue steadfastly just like they did. And it says in Acts 4, 32, the multitude of them that believed were of one heart, one heart, and of one soul. Neither said any of them that order the things which they possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Wow, that's a unity, isn't it? That's a, we could be so unified that we care so. Paul urges believers literally here in Philippians 2 verse 2, you could say, fill up my cup of joy, that's the kind of sense of it. Fulfill ye my joy. He says there, by having that same love, that wonderful harmony, that one accord, that one mind. You know, as we read, the, the same mind, the same, uh, same kind of spirit, the same heart, the same love, of one accord, of one mind. What a harmony we see here. It's uh, just a beautiful picture, isn't it? And Paul commends the church of Philippi for that. And let's likewise aspire to that as, as, our, as our fellowship, as, as other godly fellowships, as our other like-minded fellowships across Adelaide and Australia, the world, that we can have that same heart, that same mindedness, that same one accord. Ephesians tells likewise of such a thing. As Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, he says, endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Beautiful bond, a beautiful um, togetherness there, that, that closeness there. And it goes on, verse 4, there is one body and one Spirit even as you have called in one hope of your calling. And it reads further, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. All those one, one things. There's a oneness, there's a unity, a blessed, blessed unity. And Hebrews 10 tells how the early church were commanded to let us consider one another to Provoke unto love and to good works. Let's look out for each other, it's what it's saying. What benefits could result if we obeyed the Lord in this area to provoke unto love and to good works? You know, we, we want to love one another, care for one another, look out for one another as God commands us to. Forsaking not, it says, the assembling of ourselves. You know, every time we get together, there's, some, there's a benefit there. It's, it's of eternal value. When you get together with other people who know the Lord, as you assemble together, it says, uh, there's, there's a blessing. And not as the manner of some that would miss that, but exhorting one another, it says. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Who can see that day approaching? <laughs> Things are a bit wacko, aren't they, just now? Uh, it seems, uh, and I don't think we're going to go back to any kind of normality. But we can see the day approaching, and that's something good. That's something to look forward to. The day of the Lord. The blessed hope, that's something to anticipate with joy, isn't it? With, with a glad, blessed hope, that's what it is. 
And so let's encourage one another for the meantime, as we see that day approaching, let's keep on fellowshipping. That's the point. You know, whatever, whatever we can do. And uh, who knows whether we're going to have to break the law one day. I'm not discounting that might happen, that we might have to meet when it's illegal to meet, because God says to me, that's what matters, friends. So let's encourage, exhort, encourage one another, urge one another in these things. Let's, let's work at that, that reconciliation when there's a disharmony. Let's be peacemakers and combine our energies together as God's people to constantly support one another. There's a, a, a truth here of pulling together. We're co-workers, we're a team, we're a, a unit of, of God's people. We've been unified by his Holy Spirit. There was a visitor to a mental hospital one day and they were astonished to see there's only three guards over these some over a hundred dangerous inmates in this place. And uh, he asked his guard, don't you fear that these people will overpower the guards and escape? No, was the reply. Lunatics never unite. There's a truth to that, isn't it? It's a, it's, a, it's a wise thing to unite. It's a godly thing. It's a good thing. It's a blessed thing to unite. And there's a benefits that in that, that kind of unity, there's benefits. And they're out of this world. Uh, there's a benefit in the here and now and in the hereafter. Now, who knows? I, I'm just wondering who's going to be my next door neighbor in that mansion uh, up, up in glory. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not sure <laughs> uh, that I'd pick who it was amongst you. But if it is one of you, that you might be my next door neighbour in glory. But there's this, this wonderful benefits, isn't there? And that's the point. There's benefits for you. But have that unity here below. You know, we're going to spend eternity together, so let's get on with each other. Not saying we don't, <laughs> but uh, we could do better. I think every church could do better to see that unity strengthened. So David talks about some benefits. He goes on to talk about brethren. David talks about this unity that's the unity of brethren. Now, I don't have a brother, but I've got a couple of sisters. And, uh, you know, sometimes in a family, brothers and sisters don't always get on, but, but we're still family, all right? That's the same in the church of God. You know, there might be brothers and sisters uh, in the spirit that uh, you might have. You might ha- have some rough edges. Uh, but nevertheless, we're brothers, we're brethren, and we've got to get on with each other. And uh, not saying we don't, I'm just putting it out there, but where there's brethren, there's a sense of brotherly, brotherly love, that brother and sister relationship. And David sings of this, this unity, that's a unity of brethren. Wow, that's close, isn't it? How much closer can you get? It's good, it's pleasant, and now we've seen the benefits. Now we're going to look at that unity of the brethren, the brethren. Now, think of it, the unity of brethren, that's much stronger than the unity of a footy team, isn't it? Should be, shouldn't it? That that unity of the family unit, the family unit should be stronger than some army unit, as much as an army unit needs to be marching together, locks there. But as brethren, it's, it's a higher level of unity, I put to you. And as believers, we've got a wonderful family tie. Think of it. We're of the household of the faith. We're of the family of the faith, the family of God. Wow, that's precious, isn't it? Don't you think? And to think we're related. We're related. We're adopted. No matter what your uh, culture or country you've come from or the language you, you started out with, we are brothers. Amen. Sisters. Praise God. That's beautiful. And we're a family unit. We're of the household of God. We're adopted. And we're fellow adopted sons and daughters joined together by faith in Christ. That's precious, isn't it? God's brought us together. And it's like there's a kaleidoscope, isn't it? Of different kinds of people. Different kinds of people. We know we've all come from different backgrounds, different situations and, and circumstances. Yet God has pulled us all together as his family, different kinds of people, to be his church. Amen? And it's one of the key prayers of our Lord, as we looked at in the Bible study group, John chapter 17, for the unity of the church. Something our Lord specifically prayed for. He counted it very important that he would pray for it. And he prayed, including those that will believe, which means for you and me. It says here in John 17, 21, for example, as he prays, that they may all be one, as thou, Father, are in me and I in thee, that they 
also may be one in us, that the world may believe that the, thou hast sent me. So friends, this unity is a dwelling in unity of believers dwelling together, not a binding together with unbelievers. Of course, that's not to say people who don't believe are not welcome in our meeting place, in our meeting together. We want unbelievers to come so they can hear the gospel and they can find salvation. And we want to encourage them that knowing Jesus is wonderful and we want you to know him if you don't know him today. But this unity that we're talking about is not a unity of believers and unbelievers or of a compromise of God's truth. It's a unity of brethren. It's a unity based on that family relationship with our Lord. We're born again, we're adopted sons and daughters. So this unity of the brethren is a unity that's of the Spirit. It's a unity with Christ. It's based on that faith commitment that we know as saved people. It's based on God's saving truth. And saved people getting together is as brothers and sisters Amen. in the Lord. Now, someone said, Spurgeon said this, unity without truth is hazardous. Only those sanctified through the word can be one in Christ. So again, there's that, there is a dividing line. If you're outside of Christ, you're not one of the brethren. You're not one of the brothers and sisters. But thank God there's an invitation extended that you can become a believer, a brethren. You can know those wonderful privileges and special fellowship that unity that we enjoy together. So there's a unity with Christ. There's a unity in prayer. It says they pray together. That's a good thing, isn't it? We prayed together this morning already, in effect, and, and we'll continue to pray and keep on praying. And, uh, of course, the, as God's family met together, we see they had prayer times where they gathered together. Says Acts 1, 14, these all continued with, again, one accord in prayer and supplication, asking God to supply Ask God to supply your need, that supplication. They got together in prayer. And they all devoted themselves to prayer. So that's a challenge, isn't it? Not a tiny proportion of the church, but all got together to pray. So be encouraged in that. All were there to pray. There's a unity there. There was no problem of poorly attended meetings. There was a unity. There was a one accord. And there's a spiritual benefit that flows as we read of this unity David sings, it is like the precious ointment. It's like this anointment oil, this anointing oil that that ran upon the head, ran down upon the beard. Even Aaron's beard went down to the skirts of his garment. And oil speaks in the word of God as the Holy Spirit. Oil speaks also of separation, of sanctification, of setting apart. So there's a wonderful sense, you've been set apart unto God. He's, He's granted you his gift, his made you his son, he's redeemed you out of the world and made you a set free man or woman and he separated you from the world and he separated you unto himself. So biblical separation is a beautiful thing. It means we're joined together because we've left some things behind as well. We've left behind things like worldliness, like false teaching and error and sin. We've left that and we've joined unto our Lord. We brought together. We brought out and we brought together. That's church. Brought out of darkness, brought into his marvelous light. That's the church, the called out, separated, called together. A holy nation. Think of that. You know, we, we, uh, you, know you hear these stories about someone starting their own nation. You know, there's some wacko people uh, in uh, country places that, uh, that mark out their property boundary and say, I'm, I'm declaring this a different country. Well, there is a real sense we're very different country. That's amazing to think of, isn't it? You know, we're, we're actually a different country from Australia, <laughs> a holy nation. Think of that. You know, we could uh, we could explore that uh, a deal, couldn't we? But, but there's that sense where we we're so distinct and separated and and called and made God's people that we are actually a holy nation, even more than than the, the nation of Israel. We are God's holy nation. Is a sense of you could imagine that's the church in a way. You could reflect that that means we are so special in God's sight. Made God's own people. That's precious, precious, precious uh, blessing there. And friends, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So 
we want to we don't want to excuse a little wrong or error because it's dangerous. So we've got to keep careful watch that nothing damages the unity, that special, precious unity. And again, it's the unity of the spirit. It talks about it's like that ointment, it's like that anointing oil, it's like the dew uh, uh, that was upon um, the, the the grass of, of Hermon. And now, if you ever, oh, there's probably a bit of it out there this morning, a bit of fog out there today, wasn't there? Uh, you see that the grass carpeted with this layer of dew, this uh, this uh, moisture. There's a picture there, isn't there, of the anointing of the Holy Spirit refreshing us, revitalizing us, giving us new life, just like the water on the grass. Sadly, brethren can be divided. We read of that in uh, Proverbs. Uh, well, that's, that's just another point there, rather, that scripture about the anointing. A- Aaron was set apart. He was anointed as they set him aside for the office of the priest, that his sons likewise, they were consecrated, and what did they do? They anointed them. Friends, we're all anointed. As God's people, every believer has that anointing in the sense that Christ is in you. He's given you his Holy Spirit. You're a saved man, a woman, and you have that special um, endowment. But there is the other side where brethren can be divided. And it's amongst the six things that God hates. You see, or seven. Um, Proverbs six sixteen tells a false witness that speak of lies, he that soweth discord among the brethren. So God is strongly against discord So, and the causing of discord. So we don't want that. Uh, we don't want discord. We want the opposite of that to be one accord. So in a sense, I kind of joke that we should be a uniting church. A uniting church. I'm not, not saying join the, the uniting church of Australia. Now, God forbid. <laughs> but we, are, we should be a uniting church in the sense we should have a unity that's good, that's godly, that's word-based, not a dividing church. Amen? We should be uniting, uniting together. And Paul urges the Romans to keep, keep on the lookout for those who stir up strife and scandal. He says, Mark them that cause divisions and offences, contrary to the doctrine that you've learned, and avoid them. So we don't want, uh, as God's people, let's be mindful of not causing stumbling blocks, of offending, of causing offence or unnecessary hurt, but rather to work at the unity of the Spirit. So as God's family, we're called to to have, yes, some diversity. We're, we're diverse. You know, we're all of different complexions and cultures and backgrounds and situations and families. There's diversity but not division. We don't want division. We're united, but not the same. Amen? And that difference, those differences are a good thing. There's a blending together. That's a strengthening. We're one in Christ. So as brethren, we, uh, we have um, the, the fact that we stand together. We strive together. We work together. We worship together. I love the imagery in Colossians 2, where it talks about um, that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love. What a picture is that? I get the knitting needles out, and uh, I need to brush up on my knitting, but uh, we should be knit together, amen? That's the point. That's a good thing. Knit together in love. And it likewise says in Colossians 2.19, uh, of the nourishment, the picture of the body, of the head, Christ Jesus, of we as different parts in the body, different sinews and ligaments, joined together, there's nourishment there, we knit together, knit together. And there's an increase there. So it tells how we knit together. That's a good thing. We want to have that, to be close knit, to be close together. Now, it is easy, and look, I think it's very, very easy for us to get the pattern. And I've heard people say, well, they just have hello shit. You just say hello, goodbye. <laughs> We'd like more than that, don't we? It's good. You know, please be encouraged. If you've got time to linger, if you can. But I know people are busy. Uh, sometimes we just got to shoot off. Understand that. No obligation. But it's opportunity. It's opportunity. I know some people are inviting people to, to get together after the meeting. That's a good thing. That's a, that's a blessing, isn't it? That's what we want. We want to strengthen the church. And so as a community, as a fellowship, like the believers in the book of Acts, togetherness was a big thing, a recurring thing. 
when we see, for example, they were gathering together, praying together, they were praising together, sharing together, they were singing together, suffering persecution, prison together, and they were witnessing, even weeping together. So that togetherness is a good thing. It's how we get stronger, amen? The body building. We're a body. We should be body building. <laughs> Build that unity, that togetherness. And that, that will help us to be a stronger church. It talks about how we labor us together with God, co-workers, working together, not only with God, but with one another. And we thank God for all the voluntary effort in this church. It keeps things going, doesn't it? Those that are doing things faithfully, behind the scenes, the unsung, I'm thanked, mostly. Labor us together. Labor us together. Thank you. Thank you. Labor us together with God. The walls of Jericho fell, it says, because Israel was quiet together. There was a moment to be quiet. They walked around, didn't say anything. The walls fell because they marched together. The walls fell because they shouted together. Amen? That's why they, why they got the victory. They were together. Friends, we're all going up together. Amen? <laughs> We'll spend eternity together, forever. Wow. <laughs> Who's looking forward to that? <laughs> Where does this vital quality of unity come from? It's from our Lord. It's been said 100 pianos all tuned to the same fork. You know, they go ding, and they tune everything to the ding, the tuning fork. They are automatically tuned to each other. They are of one accord by being tuned not to each other, but to the ding, the tuning fork. In other words, oh, there we go. <laughs> to that sound, we must bow to that sound, amen? That's thanks for the sound effects there. Yeah, we've got to bow to the tuning fork, you know, to be those violins that are playing together, that orchestra. So tuned with fellowship, isn't it? Amen? It's been said the heart of Paul's religion, of his faith, is union with Christ. That's our union with Christ. He's the tuning fork. We want to tune into him, and then we'll all be singing from the same song sheet. Every believer is one in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3, 28. So we're brethren, brothers and sisters, together in that common faith in Christ. So Christianity, really, it means relationships. Sometimes I think we miss that. Church can be uh, sometimes a light to, look, we could be down at the Boy Scouts today or the, or the soccer pitch or who knows what else, the Rotary or some other good cause. But we're not a social club. We're the fellowship of God's people. That's precious. This is eternal. And it tells of that holy nation, a people of God. It tells of one vine, many branches. It tells of one body, many members. We've got a unity as one new man, as different functioning parts of that body. And we're members of one another. In other words, we're interdependent. We need one another. Now, don't be afraid. I've got some that like to call me for prayer requests. That's a good thing. We should be asking for prayer. We should be asking to brothers and sisters, pray for me. I've got this need. I've got this situation. Don't hesitate to call the pastor. But more so, call one another. Call one another. We're, we're all in this together. You know, I've only got so much I have to give, but we can all support one another. Interdependence. We're all part of this together. And God's joined us together in love. It's a unique bond of brothers and sisters. A lack of love can break fellowship. So let's show brotherly love to one another. I love this verse here. You know, four, ver four words. This is your memory verse. <laughs> Let brotherly love continue. Amen. Remember that one. Let brotherly love continue. Let's have that. Let's keep that. That unique bond. God joins us. He glues us together in love. And friends, we want to have that kind of strong brotherly bond. There's a blessing and there's a benefit and uh, we thank God for that. And then thirdly, we see uh, there's a blessing. Uh, uh, there's a wonderful unity. We've seen the benefits. We've seen the, the brotherly unity. Thirdly, we see the Lord's commanded something. He's commanded a blessing. God's commanded a blessing from unity. There's a maturity. There's a strength. There's a power in our togetherness. As we, friends, we face the satanic onslaught and attack. Who knows what awaits us? This is the, these are the easy days still. This is, this is easy right now. You know, a little mask. 
Honestly, is that going to be enough to put you off? A little mask to wear. What's going to happen next? The next stage, the next stage. We've got to pull together, people. Amen. Things are going to get tougher. I think things are going to get harder. I think we're going to see some massive persecution. Friends, for the meantime, we need to get stronger. And that's that togetherness that we need. That mutual support. Knitting together, welding together, cementing together. Ephesians talks about speaking the truth in love, growing up into Him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together. Notice that, joined together and compacted. It's the same word translated, knit together. So that, that compacting, that knitting, that welding, that closeness, that, that glue, knits it together, compacts it together. Every joint supplies, it says. Every part effectually working, edifying itself in love. Every part doing its part. Every one of us is the church. And every one of us has something we can do. But be stirred up in a good way to think, what can I do? Amen. Our unity brings blessing. We grow more dependent on our Lord. There's a growing. It talks about their um, growing up into Him in all things. And unity comes as we exercise humility, not pride. It's every part playing its part. You might feel you're a relatively humble part, but every part does its part. The body works. You know, we've got some in hospital. We know John's had his uh, health issues. We know Dennis, others in our number. One part breaks down, affects the whole body. It's the same in the body of Christ, isn't it? We've all got our part to play to, to heal conflicts, to, to work effectively. As a body, when all its parts work, the body grows and is healthy. So support one another. The Bible talks about bearing one another's burdens. There's times when that burden, you, wanna, you need to share it. But don't be so proud that you want to share your burden. There's a brother or sister that can help. Another quote here, the Christian life is not a solo flight to heaven with occasional formation flying on Sunday mornings. <laughs> you know, we're together. We should be like a flock of geese. <laughs> you know, they're quacking at each other. <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> Honking at each other <laughs> and keeping together. Amen. That's a good thing. And it helps us grow. We grow together. We build together. We exalt one another. And maybe we can learn something if only pride doesn't get in the way. Sometimes we think we get, like anyone, I think I can get it. We can get prideful. What can I learn from anyone else? We can. <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole pool of, of wisdom. Uh, there's counsel, multitudes of counsel. There's a blessing there, isn't there? We, we can, if we can be teachable, we can learn from each other. I can learn from you. It's not all one way. It's not some monologue there's a, in a sense where we're exhorting one another. Every one of us exhorting one another. And we can learn from each other. That's another blessing. It talks about iron sharpening iron. You know, you might get some people that, uh, ouch, <laughs> that they're sharpening you. That's a good thing. Amen? When someone says, ah, uh, hmm, and they might give you some question about this or that. That's a good thing. Sharpen each other. Keep sharp. There's a blessing of obedience. Friends, think of it. Whenever we get together, what does it say? That someone is here in the midst. So <laughs> it does make you think, well, if I miss that meeting, I'm going to miss that presence of my Lord. We don't, we don't put a heavy on people to come to every meeting. For some it's hard. We know that. But when we are together, he says, I'm here. That's something, that's a blessing, isn't it? We don't want to miss that. And there's a blessing to be part of God's family. So get together whenever you can. Make it, a, make it something you count important. And so, friends, um, we read that the Lord has commanded a blessing. He's commanded a blessing. Psalm 133, that unity, that, that as the Jew of Hermon, as the, as the anointing oil on Aaron and his beard, as the Jew of Hermon, as the Jew of, that descended upon the mountains of Zion, there the Lord 
commanded the blessing. When you think of it, really, I reckon really this touches on at least that blessing of salvation. Salvation. Do you have this? It's the ultimate blessing, isn't it? And, you know, often we ask the question when we're doing some witnessing, door knocking, or whatever way you might witness, you might question someone, do you know that you're going to heaven? And on what basis? What are the grounds that you have? And really, it's about drilling it down to Jesus is my passport. Jesus is my passport. He, he paid the price. He's given me the visa. He, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of being a little lighthearted there, but there's a sense where he is our admission. He is our entry. He is the door. It's trusting him, only him. Not in him plus him only, only him. He is the one who saves, the only saviour, the only name that saves, Jesus, our Lord. And salvation, please, you might be coming here morning, night, midweek, every night, and miss heaven, because it's not coming to church that saves you. It's coming to the saviour that saves you. Amen. It's trusting him. Friends, look at this verse. It says, it was on the mountains of Zion. Where was our Lord crucified? On the mountains of Zion. Our Lord was crucified on the hill of Calvary. It's part of that mountain range. The hill of Calvary was on the mountains of Zion. There, there the Lord has commanded the blessing. What? Even life forevermore. Friends, talking about unity. There's a godly unity. Now, we should be so unified that we are unified in our attack on the enemy. There was a time where Lord Nelson was stood on one of the, the ships on the deck there at the time of Trafalgar. And, this, and he came up from beneath and he saw these two of his officers, these British officers were quarreling, some disagreement, and he whirled them about and he pointed them to the ships uh, of the adversary and he said, gentlemen, there are your enemies. You know, sometimes we can even divide amongst ourselves and I don't believe we are a divided church, but there might be moments where it can happen. We might differ. We don't want to disagree about trivialities. There is the enemy. And we've got a united mission. We should be such a people that we are united as a, as a fighting force, contending earnestly for the faith and not dividing unnecessarily over trivialities. We can miss out from that on what matters. So we see, to recap, how good, how pleasant it is, brethren, to delve together in unity, that unity of the faith. Strive to keep it. Let's fight the devil, not one another. Let's enjoy the benefits we have. It's good, it's pleasant. Get together whenever you can. Don't miss it. Receive the blessing of the Lord. It's like the anointing oil. It's like the dew on the mountains. Receive the blessing of the Lord, the blessing of fellowship. And may he be pleased with our fellowship. May he be glorified. Amen.